بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما إن شاء الله today we will start where we left off last week in the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم we reached the point where the Prophet ﷺ and his friend and companion Abu Bakr as-Siddiq were hiding in the cave of Thawr in the beginning of the Hijrah to Medina. So they left Mecca, but instead of going towards the direction of Medina, they went in the opposite direction at first to throw the kuffar off so that the disbelievers of the Quraysh would not be able to find them. So instead of going north towards the direction of Medina, they went south and they hid in the cave of Thor for three days. During these three days, the kuffar of the Quraysh, they were searching everywhere for the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr ﷺ. But when they couldn't find them, after a period of three days, the intensity of the search it had decreased so the first day they were looking really hard then the second day they were looking and then the third day they looked and after three days of looking and not being able to find them the search it became much less intense so this was the opportunity for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and abu bakr radiallahu an to leave the cave and actually now go towards the direction of yathrib the direction of al madinat al munawwarah so they enlisted the services of a man named Abdullah ibn Urayqit. And Abdullah ibn Urayqit, he was not a Muslim, but he was a trustworthy man. And he was a man who was well known for being an expert in navigation. So he knew the directions very well. He knew how to get from point A to point B in a variety of different ways. He didn't only know one way or two ways. He knew all the different ways to get from one point to another point. So he was an expert in geography and he was an expert in navigation. So the reason why the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr enlisted the services of this man was because they wanted to go to Medina but not the way that people usually go from Mecca to Medina. He wanted Abdullah ibn Urayqit to show them a way or to guide them through a way that nobody would know. Go from Mecca to Medina, but by using all sorts of twists and turns in a way that most people wouldn't know. Because they wanted to avoid being detected. So they enlisted the services of this man, Abdullah ibn Urayqit, who was a, an expert in navigation. And again, we mentioned he was not a Muslim, but he was a person who was trustworthy and they knew that he wouldn't expose them to the Quraysh. So Ibn Urayqit, he led them towards Medina on a very unusual pathway towards the direction of al Madina al munawwarah On their way, on their way on this pathway, they passed by a group of people from the tribe of Jush'um. A group of people from the tribe of Jush'um. And amongst these people was a man named Suraqa ibn Malik. And when the caravan of three people, the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr عنه, and Abdullah ibn Urayqit, when they passed by this group of men, the group of men, they saw them, they saw these three people and they said, hey, maybe these are the people that the Quraysh are looking for. Because the news had spread around. Remember, they were offering a reward of 100 camels for the person who brings Muhammad وسلم, dead or alive. So of course, this news had spread all over the place. So this group of people from the tribe of Jush'um, they see this caravan pass by, three people. And they say amongst themselves, hey, maybe, maybe these are the people that the Quraysh are looking for. And Suraqa ibn Malik, who was amongst them, he looked and he realized that yes, this could be true. This could be true. Maybe these are Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companion. So Suraqa didn't want them to continue paying attention to this caravan because he wanted the reward for himself. So instead of saying, yes, maybe you guys are right. We should go check. Maybe it is them. 
instead of encouraging them, he said, no, 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 no. That's not Muhammad. That's not his companion. These are two people that I know. They lost their camel in this area and they're looking for their camel. Don't worry, it's not them. So then they were like, oh, okay, forget about it. He wanted to divert their attention because he wanted to go chase them himself to claim the prize for himself. So he just threw them off the track and he said, no, it's not them. I know who these two guys are. I know who they are. They're just looking for a camel that they had lost. And he didn't get up from the gathering right then and there to go after them because he knew if he got up right then and there, they would be suspicious. Hey, suddenly why is he getting up and leaving when he saw those people? So to keep their suspicions at bay so that they wouldn't become suspicious of what he was doing, he continued to talk to them. He changed the subject. They continued their conversation for some time until Suraqa ibn Malik, he said, okay, if you guys will excuse me now, I want to leave. So they said, okay, you can go. And he got up and he left and he went straight to his horse to go and catch up with them. Because by this time, the, the caravan had gone some distance. It wasn't right there anymore. So he went to his horse and he started to chase after these people from the caravan. And Suraqa ibn Malik was known as one of the best horsemen of the Arabs. And it is said that before this day, he had never fallen off a horse. So he was an expert horse rider. And he knew how to ride a horse. And he was very well experienced and he was an expert in this. So he got on his horse and he started chasing the caravan. As for the caravan, the Prophet وسلم, Abu Bakr an, and their guide Abdullah ibn Urayqit, Abu Bakr would not stay in one position in relation to the Prophet وسلم. So sometimes he would be in the front, sometimes he would be in the back, sometimes he would be on the left, sometimes he would be on the right. So he was making sure that he was constantly encircling the Prophet and the Prophet ﷺ was very calm and he was using his time in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously. But Abu Bakr sometimes in the front, sometimes in the back, sometimes on the left, sometimes on the right. So the Prophet ﷺ asked him, Ya Abu Bakr, what are you doing? Why, why are you doing this? And Abu Bakr ﷺ, he said, Ya Rasulullah, just in case anyone catches up to us, just in case anyone finds us, just in case anyone wants to harm us, I want to make sure that I am in the way between your enemy and you. So if anything hits us, if any harm is to come our way, it will hit me before it hits you, Ya Rasulullah. Look at the love that these people had for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Very easily willing to give their life for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this was what Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was doing. Making sure that he's always on all sides around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to prevent anything, any harm from coming to him by the permission of Allah. So the Prophet وسلم, said to Abu Bakr, Hawin alayka Abu Bakr, inna Allah ma'ana. Don't worry, relax Abu Bakr. Allah is with us. Allah is with us. You don't have to worry. So they continued on their way. But eventually Suraqa ibn Malik, he caught up with them. And he reached a distance where he was so close to them that if he were to shoot an arrow at them, he would easily be able to hit them. He was that close. He was within the distance of shooting an arrow. And he was a very expert marksman as well. So he was very good in shooting his arrow from his bow. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anh saw, there's this man behind us and he's coming towards us and he's getting near and he has a bow and an arrow. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam still remained very calm. He didn't even turn back to look. He's so calm because he knew, Inna Allah ma'ana, Allah is with us, Allah will protect us. So when Suraqa picked up his bow and his arrow to shoot, the feet of his horse slipped into the sand and Suraqa, he fell off his horse. This is the expert horseman who had never fallen off of his horse before this day. He fell off his horse. So he was stunned for a minute, but then he, he thought that, okay, this is just an accident that happened. Let me get back on my horse and I'll continue to chase them. So he got back on his horse and he went, f he went forward in order, order to catch up with them again. So again, the second time when he was ready to shoot his arrow, the same thing happened. The horse fell down again. Or the horse slipped again and Suraqa fell off. So this happened two times in a row now. 
So now he realizes, okay, man, this is something strange. I've never fallen off a horse in my life before this day. And now two times in a row like this. But still he said, okay, let me get back again. That hundred camels, you know, that was in his mind. I'm going to get those hundred camels. I'm going to get that reward. So he got back on his horse again and he chased them again. When he was nearby, again, the third time the same thing happened. He fell off his horse three times in a row. Now he realized, okay, this is something that is not normal. This is happening for a reason. So he called out to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Ya Muhammad, I am Suraqa ibn Malik and I just want to come and talk to you. I promise I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to harm you. So the Prophet ﷺ said, okay, come. And Suraqa ibn Malik, he goes to the Prophet ﷺ and he says, give me security, give me safety. I want a promise of safety from you. Because Suraka, he realized that this is not a normal man. This is a man who has some help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, give me safety. If you, ever, if you ever are in a position of power or authority and I am under your authority, give me safety. I want a promise of safety from you. And the Prophet sallallahu said, okay, no problem. I give you a promise of safety. I give you a promise of security. And Suraqa was happy with this. And then the Prophet sallallahu said to him, okay, I'm giving you this promise of security, but I want something in return from you. There is a condition attached to this. And Suraqa said, what is it? And the Prophet sallallahu said to him, you don't tell anybody about us where we are. When you go back to your people, you don't tell anyone that you saw us, that you met us. You don't tell anyone about which way we are going. You don't give anyone any information about us. And if anyone asks you about us, you mislead them. You lead them in another direction, not the direction that we are going in. And Suraqa said, okay, no problem. I am willing to do this. And as Suraqa was leaving, that encounter with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, كَيْفَ أَنْتَ يَا سُرَاقَ وَفِي يَدَيْكَ سِوَارَيْ كِسْرَى كَيْفَ أَنْتَ يَا سُرَاقَ وَفِي يَدَيْكَ سِوَارَيْ كِسْرَى How will it be, ya Suraqa, one day when you are wearing the bracelets of the Kisra? How will it be one day, O oh, Suraqa, when you are wearing the bracelets of the Kisra? And the Kisra, as we mentioned before, he was the ruler of the Persian Empire, which was the most powerful empire on the earth at that time. So Suraqa is surprised. What is he talking about? That one day I am going to have the bracelets of the ruler of Persia and I'm going to be wearing those bracelets on my hands? He didn't understand what this meant at that time and he was surprised. What is the Prophet ﷺ talking about? But these were the words that the Prophet ﷺ said to Suraqa as Suraqa left his encounter with this caravan. So Suraqa went back and he kept his word, he kept his promise. He didn't tell anybody about meeting with Muhammad ﷺ and Abu Bakr an, and he didn't help anyone to find the way that they were going. So he kept his promise. He kept his promise. Now remember, this promise of security that the Prophet ﷺ gave to Suraqa, when did it come in handy? It came in handy eight years later. Eight years later, after the Prophet ﷺ came and conquered Mecca. And then after that, he went and he conquered a Ta'if as well. And during the battle, between the Muslims and the Kuffar in at Ta'if, Suraqa ibn Malik, who wasn't a Muslim up to that time, this is eight years later, and he still hadn't accepted Islam yet. So eight years later, in the battle of at Ta'if, Suraqa ibn Malik was one of the prisoners of war that was captured by the Muslims. So when he was captured and he was brought with the other prisoners, Suraqa, he said to the Muslims, he said, I have a promise of security from your Prophet. I have a promise of security from your Prophet. And the Muslims, they didn't know anything about this. And they said, what are you talking about? You don't have any promise of security from our Prophet. He said, yes, wallahi I do. I have a promise of security from your Prophet. Take me to him. 
take me to him and he will tell you. So they said, okay. So they took him to the Prophet ﷺ, but before they presented him to the Prophet ﷺ, they told the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, there is a man and he is claiming that he has a promise of security from you. And the Prophet ﷺ said, who, who has a promise of security from me? Who are you talking about? And then they brought him. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't recognize him at first. He said, who are you? He said, I am Suraqa ibn Malik. And then the Prophet ﷺ remembered. He said, Naam, yawmu birrin wa wafa. He said, yes, I remember you. And that was a day that you showed loyalty and you kept your promise. And today I keep my promise to you and you are free to go. And after that, Suraqa, he accepted Islam. He became a Muslim, alhamdulillah. And this was eight years later after that initial encounter between him and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So look at this beautiful story. Suraqa kept his word and his promise to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam keeps his word and shows his loyalty to Suraqa as well. What a beautiful example of the morals and the principles of Al-Islam. Continuing with the story of Suraqa, remember the words that the Prophet ﷺ said to him as he was leaving. He said, كَيْفَ أَنْتَ يَا سُرَاقَ وَفِي يَدَيْكَ سِوَارَيْ كِسْرَ How will it be on that day, Ya Suraqa, when you have the bracelets of the Kisra on your hands? Suraqa didn't understand what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam meant at that time. But after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away and Abu Bakr radiallahu an took the reins of the Muslim empire. Then Abu Bakr radiallahu an passed away and Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu an took the reins of the Muslim empire. During that time, the Muslims conquered the Persian empire. And all of the spoils of the war were brought back and presented to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. All of the jewels and the gems and the treasures of the Kisra were at the disposal at the hands of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. And Umar ibn al-Khattab, when these were presented to him, he called for Suraqa ibn Malik. He said, bring Suraqa ibn Malik to me. And this was in al Madina. And by that time, Suraqa, he was a Muslim. Bring Suraqa ibn Malik to me. And Suraqa, he came. And Umar ibn al-Khattab took the bracelets of the Kisra, which was included in all of that treasure. And he put it on the hands of Suraqa ibn Malik. And he told Suraqa, put your hands up, let the people see. So Suraqa, he put his hands up and the people saw. And then he said, Ya Suraqa, walk amongst the people. Let them see you. Let them see what you are wearing on your hands. So Suraqa, he walked around so everybody could see the bracelets of the Kisra that he was wearing on his hands. So the people didn't understand what is Umar ibn Khattab doing? What is the purpose of this? They didn't know the whole story. And after this, Umar ibn Khattab, he said, Now Ya Suraqa, now Ya Suraqa, tell them what Al-Mustafa, tell them what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to you on the day of the Hijrah. And then Suraqa, he told the people, he said, my Habibi, my beloved one, he said to me on that day, Kayfa anta ya Suraqa, wa fi yadayka siwarai kisra. How will it be on that day, ya Suraqa, when you are wearing the bracelets of the kisra on your hands? Subhanallah. So this happened during the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh, that the prophecy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was fulfilled. So this is a brief story of Suraqa ibn Malik, and what happened to him with his encounter with the Prophet ﷺ during the Hijrah and then what happened after that as well. So after this encounter of Suraqa and the Prophet ﷺ during the Hijrah, Suraqa he went back to his people and the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr, they continued upon their journey with Abdullah ibn Urayqit continuing to guide them. So they continued on their way. And remember, they're not going on the normal path to Medina. They're going on a twisty, turvy, different type of path, an unknown type of path. So eventually what happened is that they ran out of supplies. They ran out of food. So they became hungry and they became thirsty. And they happened to reach the tent of a woman who lived in the desert. They happened to cross the path 
of a woman named Umm Ma'bad. And Umm Ma'bad, she had her small tent and she lived there in the desert. So the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr عنه, and Abdullah ibn Urayqat, they're hungry. They stop by the tent of Umm Ma'bad and they ask her, do you have any food or do you have any drink for us? And Umm Ma'bad, she says to them, Wallahi, if I had any food or drink, you would not have had to ask me. You would not have even had had to ask me. I would have presented, I would have presented it to you. This was the generosity that these people have. You don't have to ask them for food or drink. If they have it, don't worry. You are going to be presented with it. But she didn't have anything. So she said, Wallahi, if I had anything, you wouldn't have had to ask me and it would have been presented to you. So the Prophet ﷺ looks around and he sees that Umm Ma'bad, she has a weak old she-goat. It's a goat, but it's weak and it's old. And the Prophet ﷺ asks Umm Ma'bad, would you mind if I go and milk your goat? Then Umm Ma'bad says, it has no milk. This is a weak and old goat. It doesn't produce any milk. And then he said, okay, but still, would you mind if I try to milk it? She said, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, please. So the Prophet ﷺ, he goes and he says, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. And with his blessed hands, he starts to milk that goat. And milk starts coming out of it in large quantities. So the Prophet ﷺ fills a big vessel of that milk and he presents it to Abu Bakr an, and Abdullah ibn Urayqit and Umm Ma'bad. So they all drink and then the Prophet ﷺ, he drinks last after everyone has drunk. And he says the person who is milking the animal should be the last one to drink. So first he gave the drink to them and then he drank himself. Then he asked Umm Ma'bad, he said, bring all of the vessels that you have, all of the cups and the bowls and everything, bring all of it and I will fill it up with milk. So she got all of the vessels that she had in the house and he filled it all up with milk for her to drink later as well. So this was the amazing miracle that Umm Ma'bad witnessed with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After they had drunk and they had satisfied their thirst, they thanked Umm Ma'bad and they left, they went on their way. So Umm Ma'bad, she had just witnessed one of the most amazing things she had ever seen in her life. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu an and Abdullah ibn Urayqit, they left her house and they went on their way. After some time, Abu Ma'bad, the husband of Umm Ma'bad, he comes back home and he sees all of this milk and he's surprised and he's like, what happened? Where did this come from? Did someone come here? Did someone come here? And Umm Ma'bad said, yes. Rajulun Mubarak, a blessed man came here. A blessed man came here. And the story of Umm Ma'bad, it is mentioned in all of the books of Sirah. And one of the reasons why this story is so amazing is because the description that Umm Ma'bad gave of the physical characteristics of the Prophet wasallam, it's the best description that you can find. So when Abu Ma'bad came back and he asked her, did someone come here? And she said, yes, Rajul Mubarak. And then Abu Ma'bad asked her, Sifhu li, or Sifihi li, describe him to me. Describe this man to me. So Umm Ma'bad gives a beautiful physical description of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is her description. He is distinctly handsome with a beautiful face. He is well built, neither blemished by a big, big belly. He doesn't have a big stomach, nor is he very thin. Meaning his, the built of his body is perfect. The pupils of his eyes are very dark. His eyelashes are long and the area around the pupils are very white. So the pupils are very dark and around the pupils very white and he has long eyelashes. His eyebrows are perfectly close and he has very dark hair. He has a long neck and he has a thick beard. When he remains silent, you feel awe at looking at him. When he's quiet and he's not saying anything, you just feel this respect for him. And when he speaks, eminence and splendor exhibit in his words. His words are magnificent 
and you want to keep listening to him speak. His words are like sliding stringed pearls. Whatever comes out of his mouth, it's like pearls coming out. He is a gifted orator whose words are neither too few nor too many. He doesn't speak too much and he doesn't speak too little. Rather, the amount that he speaks is perfect for the person to understand. He has the clearest speech and the most audible voice as he speaks. When you look at him from afar, he is the most handsome of all people. And when you move closer to him, he is the most pleasant of all people. You will never be tired of looking at him. He is like a branch between two branches. And he is the most handsome of the three. Remember, there were three people who came to the house of Umm Ma'bad. The Prophet وسلم, Abu Bakr, and Abdullah ibn Uraiqat, the guide. So she says he is the most handsome of the three and the most important of them. He has companions who honor him. When he speaks, they listen to his words. And when he commands, they are quick to carry out his order. They serve and gather around him, and he neither frowns nor nags. Meaning when you see his face, he's always smiling. He never frowns. This was the description that Umm Ma'bad gave of the Prophet ﷺ. And it is considered the greatest physical description of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why it is mentioned in all of the books of Sirah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us with the Prophet ﷺ in Jannah and allow us to see that beautiful face and allow us to meet him and be blessed in his presence. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give this to all of us. Ameen. So the trip took about three or four days to reach Medina. It took about three or four days. And that is in addition to the three days that they spent in the cave of Thor. So the total trip from when they actually left Mecca to when they arrived in Medina, it took about a week. The whole trip took the total of about one week. So while the Prophet ﷺ was on his way, when he hadn't reached Medina yet, the news reached the people of Medina that yes, he has left Mecca and he is on his way. He's on his way. So they were excited. Okay, he's finally coming. And he's going to be here within a few days. So they didn't know exactly which day he would arrive, but they knew that inshallah he's arriving very soon. So Mus'ab ibn Umair kept them very excited. Remember Mus'ab ibn Umair was the ambassador that the Prophet ﷺ sent to the people of Medina to teach them. So he was still there with them and he kept them excited. He said, your leader is coming. He's on his way. So they're very excited. So every day after Salatul Fajr, they would pray Salatul Fajr and then they would go out into the city waiting for maybe today he's going to come. Maybe today we will finally get to see our leader, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they would go out after Fajr and they would wait until Dhuhr. So hours they would wait. And when he didn't come, they would go back. And then they would repeat the same thing the next day. Waiting for their Habib, their beloved, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until finally one day on the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal, a Monday, the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal, a new life began for the Muslim Ummah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam finally arrived in al Madina, And this was a new chapter for Islam and a new chapter for the Muslims. Gone were the days of weakness that the Muslims suffered in Mecca. And this was the beginning of a new era with the Prophet وسلم, as the leader, as the head of the state and the Muslims under his command. So this was the beginning of a new chapter for the Ummah of Muhammad And inshallah next week we will talk about some of the amazing events that happened when the Prophet وسلم, entered Medina. How did the people receive him when he entered Medina? Beautiful events that happened in those early days in Medina. And inshallah, we will speak more about that next week. Bi-ithnillah. Wallahu alam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum.